I'm your host, Logan Looney 3. You're joining me for Hit Liz Beneath, Chapter 14. You stand stunned in the tunnels below the dam, staring down the barrel of Chief Kelly's pistol. John! No. Abe, what are you doing here? Parker, all of you stand down. Josephine's gotta be stopped, and John's in the way. If you think I'm gonna stand by while you shoot my grandkid? Hey, please tell me you're not really going to. You're not a murderer. You're a good man. Sometimes good men need to do bad things for the greater good. I'm sorry, son, but there's no other way. Kelly sights down the barrel at you, and his finger starts to tighten on the trigger. Yes, there is. Huh? Parker lunges forward, seizes Kelly's wrist, trying to wrestle the gun away. Don't fight me on this, Abe. I'm trying to save the both of us here. Stop making this harder than it's gotta be! Bang! Bang, 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 bang. Everyone jumps at the deafening blast. Please tell me you died. Kelly stumbles back from Parker, holding a hand to his chest where a crimson stain is rapidly spreading. The gun trembles in Parker's hand. Hey, but... I... Kelly collapses in the water, blood expanding out from him in a red cloud. Abraham! My... My God. During Kelly's vacant eyes, Parker staggers sideways and at the tunnel wall, the gun dropping limply from his hand. What have I done? We wrestled a gun away from a guy who was going to kill a kid? Vincent, finish the ritual. It's time to end this. Nodding grimly, Vincent brings the knife towards Elliot's throat once more. No! Was that John? John, it's us! Is that... John! Robbie? About a second after Robbie stumbles into the tunnel, he's followed by Danny, Imogen, and Tom. Thank goodness. We thought we'd never find you. John, we need to get out of here now. Uh, we're not going anywhere until Vincent gets his damn hands off my little brother. No, seriously, we need to... Tom's voice is drowned out by a haunting, guttural howl that echoes down the tunnel. Mm. Back of monsters surge out of the shadows, eye blazing with teeth bared. Damn it, Vincent. Take the... But you've already leapt forward, taking advantage of the distraction to dodge around Craig and grab Vincent's knife hand. Run. Grabbing Elliot by the arm, you yank him out of Vincent's grasp and plow past him toward an empty side tunnel beyond. Stop them! We can't... Ugh! One of the rotting bear creatures tackles Vincent into the water. Vincent! Astrid rushes forward to help him while Craig while the Craig creature lumbers forward to hold back the rest of the monster pack. <sighs> Mom, Dad, I... Go, Imogen! Imogen runs after you. The rest of the group follows close behind, the echoes of battle fading into the distance. Hope you're all having a fantastic day, and hopefully this chapter is good. Under pressure. You find your way to a closed-off service compartment, taking shelter and a much-needed rest. I think we're safe for now. Thank God. I don't think I could run anymore in my life if my life depended on it. Everyone collapses, exhausted, onto hunks of rusted machinery scattered around the room. Across the room, Robbie takes off his sweater and drapes it over Elliot's shoulders. Uh, thanks. You lean close to your friends, dropping your voice so as uh, not to be heard by Robbie and Elliot. What is he doing? Apparently the society was uh, guarding him when they left to find Elliot. He, we f he followed them. He found him wandering around the t tunnels. Ellie looks up at Robbie with a frown. You shouldn't have come. What are you talking about? It's dangerous down here. You you could get hurt or, or, or worse. 
Elliot, if you think I could have just sat around while you were down here, then you're even crazier than I thought. Robbie! You two gonna kiss now? Elliot suddenly throws his arms around him. Robbie makes a startled sound, but soon melts into the embrace. John, can I talk to you for a sec? Privately? Uh, sure. Leads you a short distance away from the others, where he can talk without being heard. Um, well, there are some things I, I think ought to be said. Uh, things I haven't got a chance to say. As soon as I saw you and your brother, I, I wanted to tell you about all this and society the monsters, jokes, fiend, and... So why didn't you? Took these, I was afraid you'd judge me. I haven't been part of society for not having stopped him when I had a chance. I could live with you hating me, but I could live with you knowing I was a failure. Now, I suppose you think I acted uh, the coward, but there it is. You're a better grandpa than I sure as shit had. Um, I can see both perspectives of this, but you should have given us more credit. Why would you just assume that we judge you? Your daughter raised us better than them. You're right. Maybe. I may have been a bad parent, but Marie wasn't. I should have known that there was more of her in you than me. Grandpa stands and stretches, his joints popping. Well, I've said my piece, and now I figure I should just get out of your hair. You're leaving? Why? I'm not a young man anymore, John. I can't even hold my own against monsters and half wielding fanatics. But, uh, what I can do is get Elliot and his friend out of harm's way. You're right. It's probably for the best, thank you. Grandpa nods and then waves to Robbie and Elliot to get Elliot's attention. Uh, what's up? Come on, boys. We're headed down. Wait, what? I'm taking you home where it's safe. Like hell. I'm not gonna run home while John and everybody else fights for their lives. Scooter, I care more about you than this whole damn town. Keeping you safe is always gonna be my first priority. And that means, as long as you're here, I can't do what I need to do, because all I'll care about is keeping you safe. Elliot's face twists with anger, and it looks like he's about to object again. But then his eyes are filled with tears, and he jogs over to wrap you in a fierce, tight hug. Don't die, Goober. You cradle your little brother's bony body against your own, wondering if it's the last time you'll ever hold him. I'll try not to. You take care of yourself, Scooter. I'll see you again before you know it. Promise? Promise. After a long moment, Elliot lets you go. He crosses back to your grandfather and takes Robbie's hand in his own. Uh, you ready to go? Ready if you are. I had a boy. I walk over the door and your grandpa yanks it open. He looks back, raising his voice to carry across the vaulted chamber to you. Give him hell, kid. Thanks, Grandpa. You wave to them as they shuffle out of the room, their footsteps echoing against the corrugated walls. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> you return to your friends, only to find them in the middle of a heated conversation. Are you serious, Barker? Now, after everything we've been through? <clears throat> I have to, Danny. Can't you understand that? Oh, uh, what's going on here? Parker, he says he wants to leave. What? And go where? I anywhere that isn't here. You'll get killed out there on your own. Maybe I'd... I... But I, I can't stay here. Not after what I did. Not after Abe. Parker, it was an accident. It doesn't matter. I just killed the man who all but raised me. I ended his life. Do you understand what that means? Parker. I'm so sorry. I can't even imagine what you're going through right now. I've lost people important to me too. Why don't we just take a second and talk this through? You don't get it. I don't need to talk. I need to... I need to think. 
Parker staggers to his feet, his face ghostly pale. I'm, I'm sorry, all, all of you. I... He turns on his heel and runs, disappearing down the corner as the echoes of his footsteps linger after him. Annie springs up, fist clenched. Fine, run away, you traitor. Who needs a coward anyway? That's rich coming from you. Oh, Tom, don't start this. I know you're going to be next. What do you say to me? Hey, it's too far, Tom. Okay, let's just take a deep breath and... You're really going to let him leave like that? It's not like we can force him to stay. All we can do is keep going. I hope Parker gets out of here, okay? He'll... He'll be fine. He has to be. I hope so, but either way, we gotta make a plan. Right. We've gotta think out our next moves logically. Let's start with what we know. Josephine's trying to kill us. Monsters are trying to kill us. My parents are... Imogen breaks off, overcome with emotion. Imogen. She sniffles, wiping in her eyes and her glasses. Sorry, I'm okay. What were you saying, John? That what the society did to Josephine did something to her mind. She's lashing out because she's in pain. Cool. So what the hell are we supposed to do about it? Aside from trying not to die horribly. We have to get to the viewing chamber and free Josephine. We get it. Not everyone's doing good. Great. That's fabulous. We can tell by the skulls next to their face. Stop it, Pixelberry. Plus, you know, try to keep those society creeps from slitting our throats on the way there. Okay, so how are we going to find our way to the viewing chamber? These tunnels are like a maze. We'll just have to keep pressing on and hope we get lucky. Yeah, that's not worrying at all. Are we sure that freeing Josephine is the best idea? Like, even if we can pull that off, how do we know it'll help? We don't, but what else can we do? We can fight monsters all night, and she'll just keep sending more. We we have to try and break the cycle. Assuming we can even make it there and figure out how to free her. Silence falls over the chamber as everyone steals themselves for what comes next. Well, I guess that means we should head out. Yeah, here goes nothing. You all stand and start to file towards the door. Glimmer out of the corner of your eyes catches your attention and your step falters. Huh? You turn to find a bottle drifting lazily in the shallow pool of the water, its glow pulsing insistently in time with the distant whir of machinery. This is the last bottle! Or message in a bottle. Technically one of the same. It holds an earth shattering revelation! Oh my god, whatever could it. No. I don't have time for this shit. You leave the moldy but safe room behind, walking out into the dark, lonely tunnels, and journeying further into the recesses of the dam. You creep along the narrow tunnels, quietly as you can, shuffling single file beside the thin stream of water that covers the sound of your footfalls. Do you think we're gonna go in the right way? No idea. Place this more confusing version of Portal, except without the fun British robot or the Portal guns. Carry on in silence for a while longer until you make out the sounds of fighting up ahead. You peek around the corner and see a gang of cultists trying to fend off a pack of howling creatures. <laughs> ah! Quick, get back, get back! The group hastily scurries back into the narrow tunnel. What do we do? Okay, if we come up with a plan of attack... Screw planning! Hang on, you're not gonna... Danny steps out of your hiding place, charging into the freight. God damn it. Danny has lost her cool. N Danny has not had any chill the whole entire book. Danny, wait! Run after her, your friends falling close behind. Everyone. 
Cultists and beasts alike turns their attention to your group as Danny runs, shouting into the tunnel. Um, Danny Jenkins! It's them! Get... Mm. Rotting elk creature gallops up from behind, impaling the man on its antlers. Oh! oh. Holy sh... Shaking the corpse free of its antlers, the elk turns its attention on you. Hi. Kick it at its leg, punch in the chest, go for the spine? With deft motion, you step to the side as it charges, ramming your elbow down onto the back of its neck. Brittle bones crack and the creature slumps into the water, motionless. Too slow. Because I am the one. Before you had a chance to catch your breath, a woman tackles you into the water, her hands clamming around your throat. Oh, it's nice of her. You're not getting away again. You try to gra gasp for air, but the grip around your throat only tightens, making your head spin. Your vision begins to darken at the edges, your limbs growing weak. You feel yourself sinking back into the water, the woman's grip crushing your throat. Is everyone around me watching? Seriously? Abruptly, the grip on your throat slackens. You push yourself up and see Danny standing over you, your attacker lying unconscious at her feet. You alright? <coughs> Better. Shakily, you get to your feet and look around. Your friends, having taken down a few opponents of their own, watch as howling creatures chase the remaining cultists into the darkness. See? I knew we could do it. Uh-huh. Yeah, no thanks to you. What? Come on, let's get out of here before more people or things show up to kill us. We get it, they're bickering because of nerve, I guess. After another long slog through the gradually deepening water, you and your friends find yourselves at a dead end. Ugh, seriously? Damn it. How are we ever supposed to... Hey guys, look! You look where Imogen is pointing and find, obscured by the network of pipes, two bulkhead doors at the tunnel's end. Above the right-hand door is a rusted plaque engraved with the decompressorization chamber. Above the other, it reads, Viewing Chamber. I... I can't believe it. We found it. We really found it. The pained howl shudders through the tunnel, shaking concrete dust and icy water loose from the ceiling. Not a moment too soon. Come on, let's get this door open. We're running out of time. Danny walks forward, gripping the hand wheel in both hands, turning with all her strength, but the wheel doesn't even budge. Crap, it's stuck or something. Imogen wipes the grime away from the porthole in the door. I think I might know why it won't open. You squeeze behind her and look through the porthole. All you see is dark, murky water from floor to ceiling. It's flooded. The water pressure must be keeping the door sealed. You walk to the door marked Depressurization Chamber. The chamber beyond is... Half flooded, and this door won't open either. There must be some way to drain the water. Step back, looking around, and there's three valves set onto pipes between the two doors. Ah, look at the valves. There's a blue one, there's a red one, there's a green one. Green means go, question mark. Hey, come take a look at these. Wait, wait, wait. I know what these do. You do? See how they're connected to the pipes leading up out the chambers? These valves must be redistribution or redistributing water from chamber to chamber. If we can figure out the right combination, we can drain all the water out of the viewing chamber and open the door. Tom, you're a genius. Now figure out which one. This is where we play Worse Waldo. Based on the pipes configuration, I'd say green valve empties water from the viewing chamber into the depressurization chamber. Blue valve moves water from the depressurization chamber to the viewing chamber, and the red valves empties water from the viewing chamber into our tunnel. Do you, you think you can crack it, John? That all sounded like Greek to me. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think I got this. 
Okay. So, green... So, remember, the depressurization chamber is half full of water. Okay? However, the depressurization chamber is currently half full, and the viewing chamber is full. And the viewing chamber indoors, so you would be numbing a lot of water. Let's go with half into the depressurization chamber. Watch as the water drains from the viewing chamber beside it. The depressurization chamber fills and fills until the water reaches the ceiling. Imogen eagerly rushes forward to look into the viewing chamber. Oh, it's still half full, but why did it stop? The depressurization chamber is full. The water doesn't have anywhere else to go. So we need to find somewhere else to empty the rest of the water. Into our tunnel! Whee! Water begins to drain from the viewing chamber and starts flooding your tunnel from. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> from a drainage pipe near the ceiling. I don't like this, John. I really, really don't like this. Water continues to drain in your tunnel until it comes to a sluggish stop around waist height. Woman, it was better than us dying, so. I changed my mind. I hate this. You wade through forward to peer in through the cloudy porthole. Empty. We did it. You successfully drained the viewing chamber of water. You get a solid grip on the hand wheel and turn it with all your might. With a satisfying hiss, you hear the door unseal and the water all around you pushes it inward. Alright, time to see what's inside. Waiting for Justine to go, Hi! Oh crap, this sound again. You all walk slowly into the room, feet splashing in the shallow puddles as you look up at the stairs. Thank goodness. Looks like we beat the society here. Danny shoulders the heavy door closed and spins the hand wheel. A soft metallic click rings out when it fastens. Let's hope that gives him some trouble. The group climbs the creaky metal steps to the bulkhead door and you peer through the foggy porthole. There's another room. It looks like an airlock. You put both hands on the hand wheel and try to spin it to no avail. Damn, this one's stuck too. I think we just need more leverage. Maybe there's a loose pipe or crowbar around somewhere. Everyone fans out searching the waterlogged room with renewed energy. You take a moment to look at them, and then back at the door, the last obstacle before reaching Josephine. I might not have another chance to talk to them. Anything I need to say, I should say it now. This is your last chance to have a one-on-one -on -one with a person of your choosing before the final battle, and the last chance to boost your nerve. Huh. I'm assuming you could talk to all of them if you wanted. Hmm. Hey, Parker, you want to come in here? We can talk now. Park to Parker's probably outside going, if I, if I just watch him, maybe I'll be able to rescue them at the last second. Um, have a heart-to-heart -heart with myself. Hi. We're about to probably sacrifice ourselves again, aren't we? No, there's no time. I should help look for something to use as a lever. After several moments of fruitless search, you hear a sudden clatter. Hey guys, I found something! Make your way back up the stairs where your friends are already clustered around the airlock door again. You all look at the long, sturdy metal rod that Tom's holding. Tom wedges the pole between the handle, hand wheel spokes. It sticks out enough on both ends for everyone to get a grip on it. Ready? Three, two, one. Push! Each of you throws your entire weight behind the bar. After a long moment, you hear the screech of metal and the hand wheel turns. If only we would have brought some WD-40. Something inside the door clanks and swings open to reveal a small airlock and the door on the other side. Cool, so what do we do now? I don't know, Laura Croft, you figured the fuck out. You stare at the other door, the murky darkness beyond the porthole, and... Then you step into the airlock. Close the door. Do what now? I've got to be the one to go out there. And we all know that. 
So you guys close the door and I'll open hatch to the lake bed. You gotta be kidding me, John. You don't have any equipment, nothing to breathe, no way to get back in. You hear a metallic pounding and turn to see the faces of cultists pressed against the tunnel door's porthole. Oh no, they're here. Yep. So, you guys want to keep arguing about this? There's a squeal as a cultist begin turning the hand wheel just seconds away from unlocking it. We're out of time. It has to be this way. It has to be me. I can do this. Just hold them off as long as you can. We will. Please be careful. We'll kick some ass for you. Look at all your friends' faces for what might be the last time, and you give them a shaky smile. Well, guess I'll see you on the other side. Oh, the pun there. You stand rigid as the airlock sw door swings shut with a resounding thud, leaving you alone. Oh, here goes nothing. Swelling hard, you walk to the hatch and spin the hand wheel. Water forces the hatch open a moment later, streaming into the airlock. The water is horrifying pressure on top of you, threatening to crush the life from your body. I'm coming, Josephine. Gathering your courage, you push forward through the doorway and to the lake beyond. You struggle through the water that's thick with silt and plant life, making it nearly impossible to see. Josephine's body has got to be around her somewhere. Your limbs begin to ache. You're suddenly very aware of your limited air supply and the crushing weight of the water above you. you got to calm down. Yeah, breathe. Just calm down. Use every ounce of willpower to shut everything off and center yourself. You pretend you're in a swimming pool. No danger, only a clear pool of water in someone's backyard. It works, and you soon find your heartbeat slowing, the panic subsiding. Time to keep moving. Push through a dense crop of kelp until you spot something glowing up ahead. Is that... Push forward, squinting as the light grows brighter and brighter. And as you see, as your eyes adjust to the glare, you see... That's got to be painful. You pull yourself toward Josephine's skeleton, nailed to the lake bed with weathered metal spikes. This is it. I know what I have to do. You reach out for the nearest spike. The second you touch it, a piercing, ear-rendering scream shakes the water all around you. Oh no. Two burning eyes flare in the darkness, streaking towards you like flaming arrows. No. <laughs> like, what am I going to be yelling? Desperately, you wrap, hand, wrap your hands around the spikes and pull, but it won't budge. No, no, no. As howling, Josephine bears down on you. You brace your feet against the lake bed and pull with all your might, feeling the spikes start to shift. Come on. All at once, a spike comes free. You cringe, bracing yourself for the attack. You know it's seconds away, but it never comes. You look up to find Josephine hovering a few feet in front of you, staring at the spike in your hand. It's working. Tossing the first spike aside, you grab hold of another, tearing it free. Josephine watches, eerily still, as you... Drop the second spike, you reach for another lungs aching for air. I have to finish this. You pull out spike after spike, strength ebbing from your body. Josephine starts to shift back and forth as if holding herself back. <coughs> Finally, there's only one spike left, a beautifully engraved marlin spike driven through the skeleton's chest, its runes glowing softly. Your hand grips the spike just above the skeleton's own fingers, and with what feels like the last of your strength, you tear it free. <laughs> Josephine screams, and a powerful wave of... A pressure wave of power slams against you, hurling you back against the craggy lake bed. 
Trembling helplessly through the dark, your battered body finally gives in and the world fades to black around you. You crawl sluggishly back to the consciousness, your ears ringing. Uh, what happened? You cough up water and roll onto your side, every muscle in your body aching. <coughs> As your eyes begin to adjust, you realize you're back in the viewing chamber, lying at the bottom of the stairs. How? You look to the other side of the chamber and see your friends locked in a battle with the society. Just leave us alone! Imogen, stop this foolishness at once. The ritual has to be done. Stand down, old man. You can't win this. You're the one losing the side, girl, little girl. Watch out! Tom shoves Danny out of the way, only to get cuffed painfully in the side. Ugh. Tom! You push yourself to your feet, nearly overcome with the dizziness, grimacing. You take a few staggering steps forward. Have to help them. Shuffling forward, your toes bump into something heavy beneath the water. You look down and see... Marlin Spike. But how? As you stare at the spike, you feel a voice in your head calling out to you, begging you to pick it up. The Marlin Spike is a powerful weapon that will give you a strong advantage against the cold and unlock the last ruin lock on the cabinet. Pull away. It's too dangerous. I, I don't know what this thing is capable of. You take another wobbly step forward and collapse back to the ground, watching helplessly as your friends are overcome by their opponents. Okay, we get it. John, you're alive! You... Ugh. Get off of her! Danny lunges for the cultist holding Imogen, but is clobbered in the chest by Astrid's creature. Ugh. No, this... This can't be happening. We... We were... We were supposed to win. There's a sudden rendering sound, and the door to the top of the stairs flies open, water streaming in. What?! Josephine flows out of the water, her algae entangled hair streaming behind her. She points a skeletal claw at the assembled cultists and shrieks. <laughs> but but I freed her, why is she From out of the water hulking decaying forms begin to rise? <laughs> no. No stay away. Get away from me. The beasts leap in action, trampling down cultists and tearing into them. The water pouring from the open door suddenly surges around Josephine. When it falls away, she's surrounded by floating marlin spikes. <laughs> With a flick of her wrist, she sends one spike flying across the chamber to bury itself in the back of a retreating cultist. Lake water continues to crash through the open hatch, wave after wave flooding the room. The door. We've got to get the door closed. I'm on it. Tom scrambles up the stairs, throwing his full weight behind the door to try and shut it against the current. Ah! Mm -hmm. Undead animals tear savagely into the cultists as they attempt to flee through the tunnel door. Craig, clear a path. Yes, boss! The dirt construct barrels forward, its boulder-like fists thrashing inside monsters and cultists alike. <laughs> Ugh. The construct manages to squeeze its massive form through the tunnel door and with an almost delicate hand helps Astrid over the threshold. Behind you, the airlock door finally slams shut, cutting off the flow of water. It's done. Let's get out of here. Come, Vincent. We're almost out of the... Here's the move! <laughs> Josephine flings another spike across the chamber, tears through the air like a tiny missile, and... Ugh. Looks down to find the spike, driven straight through his heart. No! Dad! Uh. Vincent falls to his knees in the water and floats lifelessly upon the waves. His empty, unseeing eyes stare up at his wife. 
Astra tears her shocked gaze away from her husband's corpse and looks back at Josephine with cold fury in her eyes. You'll pay for this, so help me, Josephine. I'll make sure you pay. Haven't you made her pay enough? She slams the door behind her and Craig spins the hand wheel until it sticks it shut. You and your friends cluster together in the center of the chamber, surrounded by salivating beasts and corpses. <laughs> Josephine turns to you, then fire in her eyes, dancing and shifting. Kill. Oh, hell, she's gonna kill us. No, she isn't. Uh, you sure about that? I can get through to her. I know I can. She's free. She helped us, and I can just need to need to help her remember who she is. John, be careful. You wait until you're standing only a few paces from the hovering specter. Josephine, I'm Marie's son. She tilts her head to one side, with light within her eye sockets flickering curiously. Marie. Yes, that's right. You're starting to remember now, aren't you? You're starting to... Yeah. As Venus's hot, clawed hand lashes out, backhanding you across the room. Your back slams against the wall, knocking all the air from your lungs. Well, okay. Alright. You slump limply into the water, tasting blood in your mouth. Ugh. John! It's too late for her, John. We've got to get out of here. Before you can respond, Josephine is there, her claws wrapped around your throat, lifting you out of the water. Yeah. Burning blue-green pits of her eyes blaze close enough to singe your eyelashes. I've got to try one last time. It's the only thing I can do. Listen to me. This isn't you, Josephine. Me? <laughs> yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> Me. <laughs> Josephine stares at you for a long, agonizing moment as if searching for something. Then, you feel the hold on your throat slack, and you slide to the water, wheezing and coughing. <coughs> I remember. She just away from you, her form shimmering and undulating. What's happening? I don't know. Uh, Josephine, is that you? Oh god, the white light. I refuse to go into it yet. Beautiful, translucent woman glides towards you, and her cold but surprisingly gentle hand rests on your cheek. You look like Marie. Glowing tears begin to run down her face, and you feel tears running down yours. How long was I... I like that. How long was I a monster? About fifty years, I think. How much do you remember? I remember being stabbed in the heart with my own ritual marlin spike, and being tossed in the river. After that, not much, I... I was so full of rage, I... I couldn't think. I... I remember hurting people, I... I remember wanting to hurt people. That's all in the past now, you're free, Grandma Josephine. Josephine smiles, wrapping you in a hug that feels like a cool breeze against your skin. I think I... I remember seeing you in the water, so wonderfully brave, and... I wish I could have been there to watch you grow. I just wish Mom could have lived to see this. She'd be so happy to know you're finally... Josephine pulls back, holding you at arm's length. Her hands on your shoulders are suddenly very cold. Lived? I... I thought I... I thought someone... Somehow you knew. She's dead. My baby is dead? I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean for you to find out this way. It must be... Josephine's hand drops to her sides, 
clenching in a fist, the water in the chamber begins to churn, forming erratic peaks and maelstroms all around you. Kill them. Oh, no, 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 no. Stay with me, Josephine. Don't let the monster take over again. Remember who you are. Oh, I remember. I remember that bitch Astrid stabbing me in the heart. I remember the power burning me from the inside. I remember the man I thought I loved betraying me. It's time for Arthur to pay. It's time they all paid for what they did to me and my little girl. Jasmine rises, her whole form crackling with blue flames and streaks upward, passing straight through the concrete ceiling. John! Your friend slosh to the water towards you while you stand mutely staring at the place where Josephine disappeared. What have I done? You pissed her off and traumatized her all at the same goddamn time? No, continue. Chapter 14 complete. Yeah, well, I don't give a shit about nerve right now, really. Really? What's Parker gonna do? Go make me a handbag? Seriously. Group score, we get it. Parker has made you a, a dowly bag. Oh, thank you, Parker. And go make me a purse so you can walk around with it. <laughs> yep. Bitch. <laughs> well, it's not my fault he ran away. Anyway, that being said, I hope y'all did enjoy the video. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down in the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. And remember, hit that join button. It helps to support this channel, our community, and me and my brothers. And without further ado, thank you for tuning in, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.